I'm gonna survive the next 100 days of hardcore Minecraft being an engineer with Create Mod. The goals of this world are to build a bunch of automatic machines along with a full-on village that is gonna have a bunch of awesome builds. I've never played with Create Mod before, so I'm really looking forward to some of the things we can build. So join me as we take on the challenges of hardcore Minecraft, but with a twist. Let's get this video to 10,000 likes for the next 100 days. And it all starts right here on day one. As day one typically goes, I looked around for a tree to punch, but since I'm in a plains, they don't spawn very often. I did see a village in the distance, and as I approached, I punched a tree, got some wood, crafted myself a wooden pickaxe, dug down a couple blocks so I could harvest up some stones so I could then craft myself all stone tools. With my new tools acquired, I made my way into the village to do all sorts of looting and looking around in all the different chests. Luckily, this village did have a bunch of hay bales, which will be great because this means I'm gonna have a nice food source for the start of this world. I also harvested up one of their crop fields which had carrots potatoes and wheat which is also great and once i was done with the village i made my way out of there and started killing every mob in sight after traveling a couple hundred blocks i ended up coming across this beautiful flower forest which had a nice big village and a plains next to it as the sun began to set on day one i ran into a villager house and slept through the night you know for a day one i would say that was pretty dang good we got some food and we got some tools we also even found this village anyways for the first half of day two i spent a little bit exploring around and i had to decision to make. I could either build in the plains right next to this village, which would be really convenient, or I could build over in this nearby forest, which isn't too far from the village. Once I had a nice location picked out, I chopped a few trees down so I could craft myself a chest to get all of our items cleared out of our inventory. For the second half of day two, I looked around for a cave so I can hopefully harvest up some iron and a decent amount of coal. And since this is crate mod, I am also going to need a lot of andesite, so I spent a little while collecting that stuff up. After a close encounter with the skeleton, I decided to craft myself a furnace and smelt up all of my iron, so I could craft myself a full suit of armor along with one iron pickaxe. And obviously, a shield. By the time the iron was done smelting, it was now day three, where I spent the entire day down in the caves in the mineshaft looking for more coal and more iron. I ended up coming across three different loot chests, and one of them had a single diamond in it. Now, this doesn't really do me any good because I don't have any other diamonds, and I'm not going to waste my only one on a shovel. Once I had more than a stack of iron and more than a stack of coal, I decided to make my way out of the cave, but it was now the nighttime of day three, so I threw my bed down, slept through the night, and made my way back up to the surface. I didn't write down the coordinates of our chest or crafting table, so I was completely lost for a little bit until I no longer wasn't. While the iron smelts that we just collected, I spent the rest of day four and part of day five clearing out a massive chunk of forest, so we have a nice area to build in. I just realized when I was passing by a taiga, I never grabbed a spruce sapling, and that is one of the main blocks I'm going to be using for this starter house, which means I need to run just about a thousand blocks back all the way to spawn where I saw the taiga. On my way over there, I did run into a sunken ship that was pretty much completely above water, so it was easy to get the chest. Once I reached the taiga, I harvested a few trees so I can get about four saplings, and then I made my way back towards our building location in a boat because it turns out there's a river that connects both of them up. I also realized about halfway back there was another taiga, which means I didn't need to run as far, but it's okay. I also stopped at a few different spots to harvest some building blocks that I'm going to be using for our starter house. I needed about two stacks of deep slate and then I wanted about two stacks of clay just so I can make some pots and bricks. And finally, halfway through day seven, we arrived back at our chest and crafting table. There was still a couple more items. I needed like two stacks of cobblestone, but rather than just digging a random hole, I decided to start building our staircase down to the bottom of the world. It was quite annoying though because I ran into everything but stone. I hit granite, diorite, and andesite, and a couple of caves. Anyways, once I had two stacks of stone, I then placed down some spruce saplings to get myself a two by two spruce tree and chopped this entire thing down because I am going to need a decent amount of spruce logs. Moving on, I used two iron to craft myself a pair of shears to gather up some wool. Create Mod has the ability to make working windmills, so I really want to include this in our starter house. With most of the items collected, I slept through the night of day eight and spent all of day nine doing a massive crafting spree. And finally, by the morning of day 10, I have just about everything together that I'm going to need for this starter house. There's only one problem. I put all of my chest, furnaces, and crafting tools right here, which is um exactly where the house is supposed to go. So I'm I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and then get started on the house. The first thing I got to doing was flattening out the land a little bit 
it, which meant adding dirt to the backside of this area, which is gonna end up being the back of the house. Overall, by the end of the 100 days, I would like to have a village set up and I kind of want to do it in an oval shape. And then around that village, I'd like to put a three or four block high wall around the entire thing so I can keep villagers in and the mobs out. Anyways, for this house, I decided to use a lot of oak and spruce and a little bit of deep slate. I think all four of these blocks go together really well. And then I added a complimentary block of stone and cobblestone off to the side for the windmill tower. I love the idea that I'm going to be able to have a working windmill on one of my houses because in my vanilla worlds, I always build windmills and they are obviously static. Did it really just take me five days to construct this house? Yes, yes it did. But it's mainly my fault because I thought I had all the blocks together that I needed and it turns out I didn't. So I was constantly building and then having to go collect stuff up and then come back to building, which obviously slows things down a lot. Anyways, besides the house being done, I did make a little bit of a discovery while I was building. It turns out that we have a skeleton spawner right down here. Like it's literally like eight blocks below the surface. This is pretty amazing that it's right next to our house. There's a lot of skeletons in here though, because they've been spawning in the entire time I've been building. Gotta get some more torches in here. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. And now I can try taking these guys out. I think that is all the skeletons. Let me just double check. Yeah, get it all lit up. And in the chest, we have some gold, some bones, some melon seeds, and other goodies. And then in the second chest, we don't have anything very good either. We got some iron horse armor along with some iron in the wall, which I am definitely gonna... Okay, I was about to say, if that was one. No, it wasn't one. It, it, it was two pieces of iron. Anyways, it's pretty sweet that we have the skeleton spawner right below our base because it means we're gonna have a really good way of getting... XP and also bones. When it comes to the house's interior, I didn't really spend any time building one, so I spent the rest of day 15 and part of day 16 building out the interior with some chest furnaces and other important things. Oh no, there's a baby zombie right there. Oh no, oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna go up a little bit and then let the baby zombie in the house. Okay, this guy is um not very smart. He can't find the door and I guess it's a baby zombie, so it wouldn't be very smart anyways. I don't even know where he went. Maybe he like wrapped around this way. Oh, now I hear a skeleton. Uh, and since I wasn't very smart, I um I left my bed over there and I, I could make a run for it, but I don't I don't know if I want to. Oh, hey there, buddy. You're going to come to me. Oh, here he comes. OK, we got him taken care of. That that makes my life way easier. The finishing touch to this interior is actually bringing in our mechanical press and hooking it up to the windmill since the mechanical press is pretty much the foundation of create mod. And that's part of the reason I added the windmill in is because we needed some sort of rotational movement in order to get this thing automatic. Since I did have to remove some blocks to fit in the cogs, there's some gaps right up here, which I definitely want to get filled in. I just need to figure out the best way to do this. All right, I think that looks fine. It's not perfect, but it should get the job done and it's all covered up. Moving on from the starter house, I wanna get going on some other projects. But first up, I wanna make myself a sawmill, which means I need to throw three iron into the press. The upside of the sawmill is with a two by two spruce tree, if I get rid of three of the bottom blocks and then put the sawmill on the remaining block and then throw my hand crank on and spin it, it will chop the entire tree in about five seconds. What's kinda neat about this is when the tree actually gets chopped, it lands the blocks where they would go if it was like a real tree, meaning it doesn't just all land right in the center. It's almost like the tree fell over going this way. With some wood collected, I slept through the night of day 17 and moved on to day 18, where I wanted to start building an actual structure around our mine. I started off by building a pretty small building just over the stairwell, and then ended up deciding to build another larger side on the left. My thought behind this is on the left side where the bigger structure is, this can kind of be storage for all of the blocks we're gonna get from the mining operation. Now, later in this video, we are gonna build a mining operation that's much bigger than this one with an automatic drill. Next up, I actually actually want to spend a little bit of time going down into the caves, trying to collect up some more iron and a little bit more diamonds. But first, there's a few things I want to craft. One of the minor mods I have installed besides crate mod is only hammers. This just adds simple hammers to the game, which makes it so I can mine out a three by three by one area, which makes it a lot easier when it comes to harvesting up andesite. I also want to go ahead and make myself a pair of engineer goggles, which is just going to go ahead and make it easier when I'm working with crate mod tools. And the last thing is just one more iron pickaxe. And finally, I'm ready to head over to the cave that we were in a little bit ago. When we explored this cave earlier, I chose not to go down to the deep slate levels because I really didn't need anything from down there. And there's also a bunch of mobs. You know what? This might be a little dangerous, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and make a run for it. Start lighting as much up as I possibly can. Ah! Oh my goodness. So many unwanted mobs. Oh my God. There's another creeper right there. Why is there so many creepers? Oh, and now I hear a baby zombie. Oh goodness. 
Once I had the cave lit up and all the mobs taken out, I was finally able to start harvesting all the resources. I did have a good realization though that there's a bunch of zinc in the walls and I had no idea what it's used for until I learned I can use this to make the much needed andesite casings, which is all a part of Crate Mod. If there's a place where diamonds are going to be, it's um definitely down here because that looks pretty big and we're pretty deep right now. There's just a lot of mobs everywhere. There's four zombies just right there. As I made my way deeper into the cave, taking out mobs and lighting up as much as possible, I finally started to come across a decent amount of diamonds. There was also a bunch of other resources like more zinc, iron, and redstone, and even a little bit of lapis. So uh, I, I made a little bit of a mistake. I um look, looked in this guy's eyes and now he's not wanting to... Oh, he's like stuck. This is so terrifying. For some reason, he's not wanting to teleport. Okay, we got him taken care of, but still, that was absolutely terrifying. Anyways, after spending all of day 21 and day 22 down in the caves, I made my way back up to the surface with a lot of precious loot. Ooh, baby, we got 18 diamonds in total from that mining trip. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use three of these to craft myself one diamond pickaxe because my iron one is pretty much broken. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm also gonna craft a diamond axe. Anyways, I wanna go ahead and build myself a automatic cobblestone generator using some of the crate mod tools. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this cobblestone generator under this build right here off to the left side, and I'm hoping there's a way to connect up the cobblestone generator to one of these chests. With that being said, I spent a little bit doing a massive crafting spree getting everything together for this auto cobblestone farm. I kind of forgot just how large these large water wheels actually are. I mean, that's almost, what is that, five blocks high or three blocks high? I also needed some lava, but luckily I saw some a little bit ago, so I made my way over there, grabbed it, and made my way back. After some thought, I decided I no longer want to build this cobblestone farm underneath the mine building and I rather build a totally separate building for the cobblestone farm. This meant there was a bunch more blocks I'm going to need to collect up. Luckily this build is mainly going to be built out of stone so I just needed some andesite, cobblestone, and some granite. I also decided to collect up a little bit of clay so I can use some bricks on the roof. Rather than wasting a bunch of coal and charcoal smelting up all of this clay into bricks, I can actually make a mechanism with crate mod that will automatically smelt my items. By using a water wheel and using some cogs to speed up the gear ratio, I can place a fan in front of it and then in front of that fan I'll place a bucket of lava and then I can go ahead and throw my clay in front of this and after about 15 seconds it is all smelted up just like that. Now that I have everything smelted up I actually need to get rid of all of this because this is right about where the building's gonna go. With everything now cleared out let's go ahead and get started building this structure. Part of the reason I chose to build a completely different structure for this farm is because some of the farms in Crate Mod actually end up looking cool. I feel like it's a total waste of a cool farm just to put it underneath the ground where I will never see it. Anyways, as you can tell, I chose a completely different block palette for this build and didn't involve much wood at all. Since it is a little bit of a bigger building, I'm planning on putting some more industrial farms inside of here, so I wanted the building to have a very industrial look. And that's part of the reason I stuck with a lot of stone for this build because I feel like it gives the vibe of industrial. I did try to keep it on the medium size though because I don't want to dwarf the other two buildings we have already built in this village. And just by the morning of day 30, the exterior is all complete and all I have left to do is actually build the interior. First things first, I need to come upstairs and add in a little bit of water like so and carry this all the way to there. And then I want to use my water wheels and place some right there. Actually, no, it needs to go one block higher right there. There we go. Now they're spinning. And then taking some trap doors, I can cut off this water flow right there, which also looks pretty cool. Next up, I want to take some shafts and one of my gearboxes right here and throw it right there and then take another shaft and craft one of these gearboxes into a vertical gearbox so I can send it downwards because the shaft is going to go right through this hole. And then I actually want to come underneath the floor right here because this is where all of our gear ratios are going to happen. With a little bit of space cleared out, I'm going to place one more shaft right there and craft myself one more vertical gearbox that I can throw right here. And now I can begin doing our gear ratios, which is the same as the furnace we built earlier. But with that done, we now have this up to its highest speed and I actually went ahead and grabbed my mechanical press so we can throw it right there and then throw our depot down and now you guys can see just how fast this works when it's actually up to the right speed. With the shaft locations and the shaft rotational speed all figured out I can go ahead and get started on this cobblestone farm which isn't very difficult to build or at least I thought so. That ended up being so much more difficult than I actually thought it was going to be. I was planning on putting the cobblestone generator right about here, but there just was not enough room. So instead, I put it all the way up in the roof, so that meant I had to get the shaft from underground all the way back up here, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's just right back there spinning. And then it comes, wraps around to this cobblestone generator right here, and then the mechanical drill mines it, and it drops it through this chute. And then what's pretty cool is this chute actually automatically throws the block straight down to this chute, so you can see it flying through the air. I don't know. 
Something about this build just is so cool to me. And it's all to do with create mod because there's so many moving parts. I also want to put the furnace we set up earlier inside of here, but I don't have any more lava, so I can't exactly do that. Although what I can do instead is if I actually put the fan that we crafted earlier right there. Okay, never mind. I need to place it a little differently. There we go. So it should be blowing. Oh, it's blowing the wrong way. So what I need to do to fix this is actually add another gear right there. Nope, not like that, but like that. And I was able to add one more big cog right here. So it should be going a little bit faster. And then I actually want to go ahead and lower the ground down one more block just because I don't have nearly as much space. And then now if I take my fan, face it down like that, it should be spinning the right direction. Yes, it is. And then I can take a campfire, throw it right there, and then throw a deployer right there. Now I'm pretty sure this isn't going to smelt any blocks, but if I do throw my mutton on here, will it let me? Oh yeah, there we go. I just got to put it right there. It should cook all of the mutton. I just need to keep an eye on it because it's pretty hard to see from right here. Oh, there we go. It's all finished up. So I just want to grab that and we have 19 mutton just like that. I went ahead and added some slow moving cogs to the outside of the building just so it looks a little bit more industrial and you kind of know what's going on inside of there. I took it off of this shaft right here that's slow moving because I tried doing it with the really fast moving one and it just really did not look good at all. With our cobblestone generator only running for a few minutes, the chest is quickly starting to fill up. So using some iron in a chest, I can make myself a compact chest. And then with a few logs and some planks, I can then make myself a drum. This is another mod I have added in besides crate, which is compact storage. This barrel can hold 64 stacks of a single item. I also want to go ahead and use the chest, some iron and wool to craft myself a backpack. And this should hopefully be really handy because it gives me a full double chest of storage in my inventory, which I feel is very needed in crate mod because there is so many different blocks and tools I need to use. As we move on to day 35, I went ahead and started chopping down a bunch more trees to give us some more room for future builds. Luckily with the crate sawmill and hand crank, this makes this work go much faster. Once I had the trees cleared out and a good idea of what I wanted to build, I went ahead and collected up a decent amount of dirt because the land in this newly cleared out area is pretty lumpy and bumpy. And for what I want to build, I really need to flatten it out a little bit. So I went ahead and collected up some dirt from a nearby island, which we'll never really see. I first went ahead and fixed up some of the land behind our starter house that I never really finished. And then from there, I moved over to the new area where I decided I wanted to build a pond. So using the dirt, I built up the land just a little bit so we have a nice area to dig down in. And then I went ahead and replaced the ground on the inside of the pond with some cobblestone and a little bit of stone. And once I had it all filled up with water, I went ahead and used some bone meal just to make it look a little prettier. To continue the trend of giving each crate mod farm its own building, I want to go ahead and build a nice smeltery house right above the pond right here. Which by the way, I think this thing turned out perfect and it's a nice little touch to the village. Anyways, I was pretty much completely out of building blocks, so I went on a little spree of collecting up a decent amount of spruce wood and also heading over to the dark oak forest to collect up some of that. I'm gonna need some more sand so I can actually make some more windows, which there's no real good spot to collect sand in this area. I also decided to collect up a little bit of stone using my hammer, and then I remembered I just built a cobblestone farm. This cobblestone did need to be smelted into stone, so I went ahead and rebuilt the furnace we built earlier so I could smelt up the sand, cobblestone, and a little bit of clay. I also collected up a little bit of sugarcane so I can build a farm because I am level 29, so I want to start preparing for the enchantment table. And just like that, I am pretty much all ready to get started building this furnace house. I wanted to keep this house pretty simple, so I first went ahead and made the pond just a tad bit bigger so the foundation of the house approaches the water. Trying to keep the builds all consistent in the village is very important to me, so I used some stone, stone brick, and a little bit of andesite for the foundation, which will help tie the building together to the industrial building off to the right side. When it came to the second floor, I really wanted to use a decent amount of spruce, oak logs, and some oak planks, which will help tie the second floor into the starter house and the little mine building. I used the exact same roof that's on the starter house, except I added a brick chimney, which I think was just the perfect touch. Once the main structure was complete, I went around and did some small detailing like adding oak leaves around the house and a little bit of flowering azalea leaves. And there we go, by day 43, I think I got this house looking pretty good. Now, it's not the biggest thing in the world because the upstairs is only gonna be three blocks wide by seven blocks long, and that's mainly because I inset these blocks one block in from the beams. Although that's not too big of a deal because the downstairs is actually where the furnace is gonna be. Similar to how the industrial building's water wheels are set up on the second floor, we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on this new furnace house. Thank you. 
this is currently how I have it set up right now, which works, but I don't really like the way it looks and it takes up way more space than it needs to. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this whole thing down and give it one more try. I don't know if you guys have been able to notice, but this is my first time ever playing Create, so there definitely has been a learning curve when it comes to making some of these machines. And after just a little bit of trial and error, I have this thing all finished up and I'm so glad I changed it because now we have a total of 12 depots to place stuff on. So extremely quickly, I should be able to smelt all nine stacks of this cobblestone up in probably about 15 to 30 seconds. My goodness, I love Create Mod. That would have taken so long if you didn't have like a super smelter in vanilla and that was pretty easy to build and it worked really well. Moving on from the furnace house, we have this big area right here in the middle, which I really haven't been able to decide what to build right here. That's until I remembered that there is a skeleton spawner right below here. I just need to find where I dug the hole. Ah, here we go. It is right here. I definitely want to get building on this thing since I am level 29 and I'm getting close to having some enchantment stuff. I really want to have a good source of XP. Now, all I've done is dug out the spawner a little bit more and set up some water streams, but I can't really move forward because we need to go into the nether. In order to build the bubble column that's going to go right here, we need one piece of soul sand, and obviously that doesn't spawn in the overworld. So with that being said, I got some tools and items together and made my way down to the massive cave we found a little bit ago. I vividly remember there being a pretty big lava lake at the bottom, so this should work for collecting up some obsidian. I had no idea that the hammer was actually going to work, which is awesome because I just got 18 pieces of obsidian like it was nothing. Once I was back up to the surface, I went ahead and set up the portal in a temporary location behind the mine, and then I crafted myself a pair of gold boots so no piglins attack me, along with a bow because I do have a decent amount of arrows. Hopefully we get a pretty decent spawn. Oh my goodness, there's lava falling right now. Oh my goodness. Really, it just really, really, really it just had to do that. Thanks game. I should be able to get it all closed off though. Yeah, that, that's what I would have spawned in on. Why, what is wrong with this game? I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this one just to make my life a little bit easier. With the lava cleared out, now I just need to look around for a soul sand valley just to get a little bit of soul sand. So far, it seems like we have spawned in a little ravine right here that has a roof on it. I'm just hoping there's a way out of here and I'm not going to have to dig through like 100 blocks of nether rack. Luckily, that was not the case and I quickly found an exit into a much bigger open area in the nether. I didn't even need to find a soul sand valley because one of these scorchia veins actually had some soul sand and some soul stone. I also went ahead and collected up some of the scorchia because you can make pretty cool looking bricks with it, along with some glowstone and a little bit of nether quartz for a future project. Once I got back from the nether on day 50, I decided to craft a boat and follow the river until I could find an ocean. The last item I needed for the skeleton farm was some kelp just so I can build a water column and kelp is also handy for making some belts in create mod. I did come across a village which had a few chests that had nothing really good in it. There was a bunch of hay bales but I decided not to harvest them and then I finally found an ocean that was filled with kelp so I spent a few minutes harvesting a bunch of this stuff and then I decided to make my way back on foot because I'm gonna need a bunch of leather when it comes to this enchantment table so any cows I saw I would stop and kill to harvest their leather. Once I got back to base there was a quick project I wanted to work on which is a cow pen. A very minor mod I have added in is feeding trough, so I crafted myself one of these, built a little pen for the cows, and used leads to get these guys in here. The feeding trough is super great because it pretty much just causes the cows to breed every time they are ready to go. I just need to remember to fill it up with wheat. With that out of the way, I went ahead and got working to finish up the skeleton spawner. There wasn't much left to do when it came to the actual spawner itself, but I had to figure out a way to camouflage it because I wanted the killing chamber up on the surface, so I decided to build a rock out of stone, or I guess you could call it a boulder, and then I went around detailing it and adding some texture to it. And honestly, I think it turned out really great. The only downside is these guys have full health when they reach the killing chamber, so it takes a while to kill them. I got the skeleton XP farm all finished up along with getting myself up to level 31. Oh yeah, and also we we have a friend now. I have not given him a name yet, but I'll let you guys decide that one in the comments. Anyways, before I actually build an enchantment setup, I want to go ahead and build a structure for it just because I feel like it's a good reason to go ahead and build. Although first, I need to move this cow pen out of the way because this is just about where the house is going to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the wheat from in here, throw it in my offhand, and everybody follow me. All right, everybody, just follow me on in here. Then I just need to get this out of my offhand and close that gate. Okay, no one got out. Successful. I also need to go ahead and bring the feeding trough over too. Just put it right in the middle and load it back up and these guys should almost be ready to breed again. Now that I have the cows moved out of the way, I need to go ahead and clear out a small chunk of forest so I have open land to build on. This is going to work as twofold because I'm also going to need a decent amount of oak for this build and I'm completely out of it. Clearing out that chunk wasn't enough so I went ahead and spent about 10 minutes harvesting a bunch of oak trees from the nearby forest. 
forest. Then I moved on to collecting up some spruce trees, which works really well when you use bone mill and the sawmill and create. By using the sawmill and two by two spruce trees, I was able to get this much wood in about two minutes. Create mod is um pretty amazing. Now that I have plenty of building blocks, I went ahead and got started building this new structure, which is gonna have a very similar block palette to the furnace building on the right side of it. Now, just for this house to be an enchantment setup would be kind of a waste because it's much bigger than it really needs to be. So I'm planning on making part of this house also some storage for some automatic crop farms we're gonna have along the backside. This has easily become my favorite part of the village because it's not too flat and it has a nice incline as you walk up the pathway and it just looks really pretty in my opinion. We're already into the 60s when it comes to the days, which means we are more than halfway complete with this 100 day challenge, meaning the crunch time is about to start and there's a lot more things I wanna build before this 100 day challenge is over. The house is all complete, but I feel like I'm causing a humanitarian crisis here. The cows have been breeding with this feeding trough and um, it, it's starting to get a little full in here. I actually think we're gonna start hitting the mob cap pretty soon, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these guys out. And just like that, we have more than enough leather to craft all the books, along with plenty of enough sugarcane. I was also able to get myself over a stack of steak, which is great because I'm almost out of my current steak. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this on the depot right here and smelt it all up. While the steak smelts, I went ahead and crafted all the leather and sugarcane into books and then crafted 20 bookshelves. And just like that, we have over a stack of steak and I'm gonna smelt the other 19 up and also craft myself the enchantment table. I've not done anything with the interior of this new structure, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear out all of this grass and place in a nice spruce floor. None of the enchantments are looking too good. They're all just unbreaking three right now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the shovel just because I always am breaking shovels. Hey, and you know what? That's a really good shovel. Efficiency four on breaking three. I will 100% take that, but we are level 30, so I can actually do another enchantment. It seems we are still showing unbreaking three pretty much on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it on our pickaxe, let's say. Hopefully we get some fortune or efficiency. Oh, oh, I'll take that silk touch, definitely. Would have loved a little bit of fortune, but silk touch will definitely do. Using my last three diamonds, I crafted another diamond pickaxe and then went over to the skeleton spawner to get back up to level 30. I really want to try getting fortune three on a diamond pickaxe because I am all out of diamonds and it would be nice to get extras when I actually mine them. Right now it is showing efficiency four. Hopefully we got a touch of fortune and no, we did not. Which means it's about time I craft myself one of these grindstones and throw it down right here so I can get rid of this trashy pickaxe. I got myself up to level 30 one more time. So hopefully this time is the last one and we get fortune. No, we got the exact same pickaxe again. All right, well, time to get rid of it, I guess. I went ahead and did this two more times, getting myself a smite four sword and another pickaxe with efficiency four and unbreaking three. I'm all finished up when it comes to enchanting for a couple days because it seems like I just can't get fortune and I am wasting days. It sucks too. We had a lightning storm that started in the morning, so we pretty much wasted an entire day because of that. As we move on to day 64, I wanted to get started with my next project, which is some auto crop farms and some auto tree farms. I had a location picked out, which is right behind the structure we just built. It's nice, it's big, and it's flat, but it does need a little bit of manicuring around the edges to make it look a little bit better. I used the sawmill to chop all these trees down, and I'm not exactly sure if it's faster than using an axe, but it definitely makes for a better looking time lapse. I'm gonna need a decent amount of iron to craft all these sawmills along with all of the harvesters, and I am pretty much all out of iron. So with that being said, I actually looked for a nearby ravine, jumped down into it, started to collect up a bunch of iron, and started exploring around the nearby caves to collect up even more iron. I know it's possible to make a full automatic iron farm that's villager free with create mod. I'm just not exactly sure how to build one and if we even have enough time left in this 100 days to construct one. Once I got back to base, I threw all of our freshly collected iron in our automatic smelter and then went ahead and threw 24 pieces in the press to give me some pressed iron. That's until I had a realization that deployers require brass and in order to make brass, you need a blaze burner, which requires a blaze, meaning I need to make my way all the way back into the nether and look for a fortress. Once I find a fortress, I can collect up a blaze and I need to do all of this without dying. And finally, with everything I needed, I could go ahead and craft myself a mechanical mixer and a basin, and then find a nice spot in our industrial building to hook this up to our water wheels. To make brass, you throw one andesite ingot and a piece of copper in the mechanical mixer, and then you ignite the blaze burner with anything that burns. This might be one of the coolest machines in Create, just because how interactive it is. Finally, with more than enough brass, I could go ahead and start doing a massive crafting spree for this tree farm, which ended up taking much longer than I thought, just because I didn't know exactly how much of everything I needed, and it turns out it was a lot more than I thought. And finally, by day funny number, 
remember, I actually have everything together that I need for this build, which is all in this chest. That took so much longer than I actually thought it was going to. Mainly, it was to do with the brass because it just meant I had to go to the nether and go get a blaze, which took some time. Skilled I am not, so I actually went online and looked up a video on how to build these tree farms because they're actually not very hard to build. They're just, I don't know. I just don't know how to use create mod. It pretty much just uses a few of these sawmills, some deployers, and then a linear chassis and a water wheel to power this whole thing. Um, that, that does not seem to be working quite right there. Mm hmm How about now? Is it gonna work? Uh, nope, still, nope, still not still not working. It should be working now. Yes, it is. Everything is all attached. So I just need to go ahead and put a ton of saplings in here and it should start placing them down. Okay. Yeah, it is. If I use a little bit of bone meal, I should be able to test this thing and just bone meal a couple of these trees. There we go. It is chopping that tree and it should place the sapling back in. Yes, it did. Perfect. And everything is ending up in this chest. You know what? That wasn't too hard to build. I need to build a second one. And luckily I had built the first one and now I know how to do it. So it shouldn't take nearly as long because that took almost um two entire days. Turns out I was wrong and it took another entire two days to build the one for the spruce trees. But once it was completed, I decided to craft up some portable storage interfaces, some brass funnels and a couple belts so I can actually bring the items from these tree farms directly into the enchantment building and have a storage system in there. Six days Days later, it now puts us on to day 75 and the tree farms are pretty much all complete and working completely fine. Um, we're just gonna ignore that because it seems to still be working even though the leaves are stuck to it. Anyways, part of what took so long is these storage interfaces that are on these machines hook up to this end of it and then it puts it through this funnel onto the belt. Although I was running into an issue where it wasn't putting the spruce into here and that's because this little arrow right here. That little arrow caused me like two days of pain and suffering until I realized that that's what it was. Anyways, they've been running for about 10 to 15 minutes now and we've gotten a decent amount of wood. They're not necessarily the fastest farms in the world, but as of right now, I really don't need them to be. After taking a step back and looking at this farming area, I decided I really wasn't happy with how it looked. So I went ahead and chopped a bunch of the trees in the surrounding area because I'm planning on putting another structure right here. This structure is going to be a lumber mill where all our chests for these automatic farms are going to be along with having a moving sawmill. It turns out if you throw a log in a sawmill, it turns it into a stripped log automatically. This will be really handy when it comes to crafting andesite casings because it's one less step in the process. Anyways, for the roof of this structure, I decided to use brick and granite to tie the industrial building into more buildings because by itself, it stands out like a sore thumb in this village. Anyways, since the chests are now going to be in this building, it does mean I need to get rid of all of the belts and funnels I just set up and reroute them into a new storage room. And just by the morning of day 82, this whole area is pretty much complete. We have our working sawmills right here. Oh, there's an apple stuck right there. I don't want to cut myself, but I went ahead and bone mealed this whole area just to give it a little bit more depth in uh, detail because with none of it, it was looking really bland. I also no longer have the belts going into the building right there. They kind of make their way down over here and then they go up this belt here and into this chest. And yes, I've gotten that much wood in the time it took me to build this lumber mill. Anyways, with only 18 days left, there's still a few more things I want to get done. And the first one of those projects is by building a miniature lake right here. And yeah, I know, probably not completely necessary, but I think it's going to look really cool in this area. So first things first, I spent about half of day 82 collecting up a decent amount of dirt because I'm gonna need a lot of it. I'm really trying not to terraform this area too much just because I don't want it to look too manicured, but for someone like me, I always think areas need a little bit of love. With more than enough dirt now collected, I can get started on working on the outline of this lake, and I'm going for sort of a kidney bean shape so I can maybe put a lighthouse on the little area that it sticks out. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it done in time, but it is a thought if we do have some leftover days. The final thing to do was adding a retaining wall along the backside because I really didn't want to build this whole area up with dirt, and I ended up really liking how this turned out. And just like that, we have ourselves a much bigger lake than this uh, puny pond right here. It's not as detailed as this one because I didn't go through and do the cobblestone and stone on this one like I did on that one, but I did use some bone meal, so at least it has some greenery inside of it. Oh, and of course it starts raining. At least it's becoming nighttime. With 15 days left, I still need to build a barn so I can have some animals and um, give these guys a proper home. I'm not loving how the fence line just runs completely linear like this and along here. So to split things up, I'm gonna go ahead and build the barn kind of in this area. As most of these buildings normally go, I first started off by clearing out a good portion of the forest, and then I could go ahead and lay out a template of this building. Now, barns tend to be a little bit on the larger side, but I had to be careful here because if I made it too big, it would stand out from the rest of the builds. I think I've done a pretty good job so far in this village of keeping all the builds around the same size, and I don't want this barn to be any different. Anyways, I kind of took the two different block pallets we've used so far in this village and put them both together. I used the oak planks and stripped oak logs for the walls, and then when it came to 
the roof, I did the deep slate around the edges with some brick and granite. I also last second decided to add in a tower on the side of it, which will have a windmill. And I'm not exactly sure what the windmill is gonna power, but I think it adds a little bit more detail to the build. Once I had the main structure complete, I could then go ahead and start working on the pens. And I put the cow pen off to the right side and it's not super big because I don't really have a need for it to be that big. And then on the left side are the pig and sheep pens, which I made even smaller, which I could always expand if I need to, but for right now, I think it's fine. And I don't even have pigs or sheep. We're about halfway through day 93 and the barn is finished up for the most part. I have our cow pen off to the right here, but I have yet to get any pig, sheep, or chicken, which I'm not really worrying about just yet because we only have seven days left and the crunch has really begun. Also, I didn't build an interior because I don't really know what to put in here. And once again, time is of the essence. Although while I was building this barn, I also was killing some skeletons to get myself up to level 30. And finally, we were able to get fortune. Now it wasn't fortune three, but fortune two is better than nothing. The reason this is so important is because I am determined before this 100 days is over to get myself a full set of diamond armor, along with a new axe, because this thing is uh, nearly broken. When it came to looking for diamonds, I started off by exploring some nearby caves that I hadn't finished up exploring earlier. I spent about a day and a half doing this and I just was not hitting any luck. I only ended up with three or four diamonds, so I decided to make my way back up to the surface and continue our strip mine down to the bottom of the world. Once I reached the bottom, I dug a couple tunnels using my hammer with Unbreaking 3, and this seemed to work unbelievably well. Being able to dig out a three by three area makes it go extremely quickly, but it does seem a little bit OP. I guess diamonds aren't that overpowered anymore since there's now netherite. And with other mods, you can get tools that are way better than that. And just by midday 96, I am up to 52 diamonds. I actually had 55, but I decided to craft myself one more hammer because my other one is pretty much completely broken. I also went ahead and enchanted it and got an efficiency four. So I'm really tempted to see how fast this thing mines. Oh yeah, fast it definitely is. I wonder if you use haste if you can get an instamine hammer. That would be so overpowered. Anyways, now that we have all of these diamonds, I can actually go ahead and craft myself a full set of diamond armor. So I can now switch all of that iron armor out and look at us. I would have loved to go for netherite in this 100 days, but honestly, mixing in crate to the equation, it probably just would have been too hard. With just three days left of this 100 day challenge, I'm really about to put myself under some stress. This is hardcore after all, so I want to be as safe as possible. So what I'm going to do is actually build a wall around this entire village. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to get done, but I'm really going to try to do it. I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of logs from our automatic tree farm, which is going crazy as you guys can see, and got started on this wall around the village. I didn't go for anything crazy detailed just because time was of the essence, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get it done if I did some crazy detail. So I decided to go back and forth between stripped and unstripped oak logs, which honestly is one of my favorite wall designs. It's simple, it's easy, and it's not very expensive, especially when you have an automatic tree farm like I do. As the days counted down, I continued on building, building as fast as I possibly can before this 100 days is over. Luckily, I finished it all up on day 99. Wow, and halfway through the 99th day, it starts raining. Anyways, I had just enough time to get this wall done. I did not end up wrapping it around the entire village just because I would not have had time for that. But it starts right back here on the right side of the barn, wraps all the way along the back, and then it comes along the back of the starter house, all the way behind the furnace building and the industrial building, and ends right here along the backside of the enchantment house and the tree farm. I felt like it didn't really need it back here because the tree farm does have a fence line going along the back, so mobs couldn't get in anyways. And can you please get out of my frame? Get out of here. And here we go. The sun is beginning to set on the 99th day so we can throw our bed down and sleep through the night, which takes us right on to day 100. We actually made it through the 100 day challenge and we did so much. We were able to build this super pretty starter house that has a nice windmill off to the side. We have our industrial building, which is loaded up with a cobblestone farm that is almost full. I actually stopped it and took some cobblestone out of it. We got some of our tools, our water wheels. We have our mine building right here that goes all the way down to the bottom. We also got super lucky and had a skeleton spawner like right below us, only a couple blocks. So we have our skeleton spawner, the big lake, the barn, the wall, the little lake with the sugar cane. And we got our furnace building right here, which doesn't have fully automatic furnaces, but they're close enough for me. They already smelt ultra fast. We got our enchantment building right here, which I think is my favorite structure in this world actually. I don't know. There's something about this spot that I really love. And then along the back, we have the automatic tree farm, which was actually full until I started building the wall, but you can see how much it's producing. Also, the seed is going to be down in the description. Anyways, thank you again. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already. See ya.